Hello and welcome little stitches. Today we're making a little Dr. Seuss fish. If you've come to the library and picked up your kit, these are three items that you still need to go find to be able to complete this project. You'll need a little bit of glue, some scissors, and a permanent marker. If you have picked up a kit from the library, these are some of the items you will see. A fish pattern, a little needle, a spool of thread, a large piece of felt, some fluff, and two little circles for the eyes, and two little black circles which are also for the eyes. If you weren't able to pick up a kit, these are some items you could pick up to complete our little Dr. Seuss fish. Okay. The first thing we're going to do is take our printout and we're going to cut out each of the pieces you see here. So you want to make sure that your fish are facing the opposite ways and that you could see that black line facing up. Some of them, if you turn them over, they're not going to face the right way that we need to make our correct patterns for our fish. Next, I'm going to lay them out all on my felt piece before I cut anything because I want to make sure I have enough room to fit all my pieces so I don't put one right in the middle and cut it out and I won't have enough room for all my other parts. So I'm just going to make sure that I stick to the edges and that I have enough room to put all of them on here. Perfect. Next, I'm gonna take my permanent marker and I'm gonna trace my outlines. And there we have it. Next, we're gonna take our scissors and cut out all of our shapes. I'm cutting a little bit on the outside of my lines because I want more room when I'm sewing. If you cut inside, your fish just might be a little bit smaller as you're starting to sew them up. All right, now that that's all cut out, what we're gonna do is take for both of our sides of our fish and we're gonna lay them where you could see that black outline. And if you cut all the black outline off, that's okay, but just make sure that both sides the part we want in the middle doesn't have any outlines at all. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna sew this up and we're gonna turn it inside out so that's actually gonna be the outside of our fish. And this is our inside. Next up, we're gonna take our needle and our thread. When you first get a brand new thread, Sometimes it takes a little bit to find where the end is, so you'll find that and unspool it. I'm gonna take some of the string. You don't wanna take too much at once because it might get knotted. So I'm gonna start with that much. I'm gonna cut it. And if you're using the needles from our kit, they are easy to thread. They've got a little hole at the end. So what you get to do first is take both ends of the thread, make sure they match up. I like to wrap it around my finger and then you roll it down, spin, 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 and then you pull it to the end and you're gonna make your knot. Then you've got a, your thread in a big circle and you're going to find the other side and you're going to take your needle and just feed it through that way. Then you're going to take that and we're not going to sew all the way around. We're going to start at the nose and go all the way to where the fins are, just from the nose to here. And we're gonna stop 
and then we're going to start again at the other end of our fins all the way until the tail and then we're going to stop so nose to fins we're going to sew from after the fins to the tail we're going to sew All right, so I'm gonna start right here. And I'm gonna take my needle and I'm gonna go through and pull all the way. And I'm gonna just go a little bit over. Now the further, like if I went all the way over here and pulled that through, there's gonna be this much room between the threads for all the stuffing to fall out. So to make sure you have a nice, clean, it's called a seam, we want to make sure we go back and forth right next to each other. Because the bigger that space is, the more holes there are going to be when you, um, when you turn it around for your seam. So I'm going to go there. And I'm just going to go up a little bit and go to this side. Sometimes, since it is an easy threader, if your thread falls off, all you have to do is take it and re-thread re it. And I'm gonna go through. And pull. And you just keep going all the way to the nose. All right, now that we made it to the end of our nose, you have two choices here. You can make your knot, which is what I'm gonna show you, or you could go back through one more time and go in between all, each thread you just did, and that makes it even more of a nice thin seam so none of the stuffing falls out. So if there's any spaces here that are a little too wide, you could go ahead and just put another little stitch through. And then when you're ready, you're gonna take your needle, you're gonna go through not both sides, just the one side and cross it over the thread, pull up, and you're gonna see a little loop. You're gonna take it and go through the loop and pull, and you're gonna do it one more time. You're gonna make a little, another little loop and pull. Now, if you're having a hard time with that, what you can do is take the thread off the needle, take your scissors, cut that little loop. So now I have both sides of my thread and I could just make knots if that's easier. You want to make at least three knots if you're making it this way. But you got to make sure that your thread is long enough. And then you could cut the extra. And there we go. We have from our nose to the fins. Then we're going to skip the fins and we're going to go from the end to right where the tail starts. And then I'm going to start here. And again, we're going to go through the other side. Skip just a little bit. Back through the other side. Pull it all the way. And then again, you're going to go back and forth until it's all the way to the tail. All right, I made it to the tail. I'm going to check and make sure none of the stitching is too far away. I think that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna make another knot. Now I'm gonna go through, make a little loop, and bring my needle through it. And once you've done that, you can cut I'm going to take the rest of that string off because it's not long enough to hold on to. Open this guy up a little bit. So remember what I was saying is the outside with the black lines that we were looking at 
is going to be the inside of our fish. So the part that's inside right now is going to be the outside of our fish. So I am going to take this and just move the flap up. I'm going to take one set of my fins and I'm going to place it on the inside just like that. And I'm going to take my thread and the part that you're going to pick is where the black line is facing the outside of the fish. So we don't want to see the black. So we don't want to go this way. We want to go this way. And then I'm going to cut my string, make another knot, thread the needle, and that same way we've been sewing the fish, I'm going to bring my needle up through this way because I want the knot to be the inside of the fish. Remember that's the part we've been working on and this is going to be the outside of our fish so I want the needle to come up and then I'm just going to make it nice and small little stitches all the way across so that little fin stays on. So it's going to look a little bit like that. See how you can flap it? And when you're looking at the clean side of the fish, you see the clean side of the fin. And when you turn it over, I see the outline on both those sides. And then again, on the inside of your fish, I'm going to make my knot so his little fin doesn't fall off. And I'm going to just make that little loop and pull. And I'm sure you've guessed it, we're going to do it for the other one too. So now this side has a fin, now my other side needs the fin. So I'm going to line it up and you could even close it to see if the fins are on the same side. See how I opened it up like a little taco? And these two fins are mirroring each other, so it looks like they're the opposite. Again, I don't want to see any black lines or any of your outlining. And I'm going to start my needle from underneath so the knots are all on the inside. And again, I'm just going to make my nice little stitches. all the way to the end. And then remember this is going to be our inside of the fish. This is where I'm going to make my little knot by making a loop and pulling it through. Remember if the loops are too hard you're welcome to cut it and make your own knot. All right, so you might be wondering, we've got one more piece. So for this one, we're going to have to tuck our little fins inside so we can't see it. So I could fold it and you can't see our fins anymore. See how they're tucked in there? Because the next part we're going to do, this is going to sew all along the bottom. Okay. So on the fish that's done, 
we have the little fin that we just sewed on, the other little fin we just sewed on, and right now we're going to sew up that belly. So for this one, I want to make sure that I can see the outline just like all the other parts and you can kind of flatten it down like that. So it goes belly and then the pieces you just made and make sure that those little fins tuck underneath. And what we're going to do this time is we're going to start from the fin and we're going to sew all the way up to right where the mouth would start. So right around here. And we're going to sew from the fins, from the tail, all the way to where the mouth is going to start. Because if we sew all the way, we're going to be stuck with a fish that looks like this. But we're leaving the mouth open because we're going to turn it inside out. That way all of our stitches are going to be on the inside of the fish. And all those nice clean seams are going to be the outside. So. You can line that up. Again, make sure your little fins that you sewed on aren't sticking out and that when you look at the belly, you can see your outline. I'm going to take another piece of thread fold it in half Wrap it around my finger, spin it, and make your knot. And then on the other side, I'm going to pull this part through. So, I'm going to start with the tail. And I don't want to be too close to the tail because we're also going to have to flip the tail in. So I'm going to go right around here. And again, we're just going back and forth. Don't leave too much space in between. And if you want to go back and do another one so that there's no spaces, or in the beginning, you're going to keep it nice and close, that's up to you. Remember, the closer the spaces are, the less likely the stuffing is going to fall out. All right, I'm starting to get to the point where I'm pretty close to the mouth and I don't want it too small of a mouth because it's going to be hard to push all this through to turn it inside out. So I'm going to stop about there. So I'm going to make my knot. And I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Real quick, if you run out of thread halfway through, that's okay. Just make a knot and get more thread and keep going. It doesn't have to, the one piece of thread does not have to last the whole time. All right, and once I get around the same place on the other side, I'm going to make my knot. All right, now this is going to be a little bit tricky, but we're going to open up the mouth and we're going to push all our fish going all out the mouth. So he's going upside down, inside out, and we're going to have to pull, pull, pull because we want to get our tail out and the other side of the tail. So remember there should be two parts of the tail and then the rest of our little stomach. And then don't forget about the fins on the top. Push those through. Okay, now that we're all turned the right 
way, we're going to get a piece of string. I have a different color string because I've made two fish with my spool. So I made this one first. And I just ran out of string, so I've just got to get a different color. But you'll have plenty of string on your spool. So we're going to start with our knot. Get our needle threaded. And the first thing we're going to do is close up our tail. Because if we try to put stuffing in there, that's all going to fall out. So now we're going to be sewing on the right side out. So we want to make sure we're nice and neat while we do this. So if you see this one, I, we will be seeing our stitches because we're doing it on the outside of the fish. So for each of our stitches, we want to make sure that there is even as you can, so they all match. And then for our knot, what I'm going to do is open it up, put my needle through first. That way the knot is hidden in there and we don't have to see it. So then I'm going to make my first stitch to close up my tail and then again I'm going to go back and forth nice and even all the way around my tail. So if you get to a side where one is different than the other you can cut it down but you're going to have to use the smaller one as the new pattern and that way they match up. As we get down to the bottom, we want to make sure that the stomach is also attached so there's no holes. And then once you're done with that, I'm going to make my knot. To make sure that that's all blocked off so no stuffing falls out that way. Okay, next yeah. we've got a couple last things we gotta sew. We're gonna sew the top, we gotta sew the mouth, and we're gonna have to put stuffing in, and it's time to bring out the two white eyes that you have. So we're actually gonna sew those first before we close the mouth. So I'm gonna get some of my thread now if you feel more comfortable, you can glue these on at the end, but I'm going to sew this part for now. But you are welcome to glue those on if you want to. But here's how you do it if you're going to sew them on. So you're going to take your fish and you're going to figure out where you want the eyes to go. And I'm just going to set it on there for a moment and make sure they line up and they're right where I want them to be. Then I'm going to take my needle and my thread. I'm going to start from the inside so that way my knot is on the inside of the fish. Go through the mouth, up and down, all the way around the circle of the eye. So I'm going all the way around. For a minute, I'm going to take this one off and set it down. I want to flip this so I can make a nice knot inside the fish. So I'm going to cut that. And I have enough thread 
So I'm going to make a new knot. And then based on where that eye is, I'm going to place the other one. Again, I'm going to see where that's going to be. Go in through the mouth. Oh, lost my thread. Go in through the mouth, out through the eye. I'm going to do that all the way around again. Once you got that, we are going to make our knot. And since it fell off, I'm going to show you. If you didn't feel comfortable doing the loop, what you could do is take your scissors, cut it in half, separate them, make your knot, and make a couple knots. At least three if you're doing it this way. Once you got those in, we're going to cut the extra and there we go now you're going to take your stuffing and you're going to start with a little bit at a time then we'll push it all the way to the tail and you're going to keep taking a little bit at a time and filling up your fish Now the nice part about having the top open is if you need more room to push it around, you can use that. All right, so we got some in there. And once he starts looking pretty good, we are gonna close up the mouth next. And I'm still going to leave the top open just in case once the mouth is closed, we want to put any more stuffing in there. So I'm going to take my thread, make my knot, thread my needle, And we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to start by bringing my needle through the back of one side so that way the knot is hidden on the inside. And then I'm going to push it and make sure everything lines up. And again, this is going to be on the outside so we're going to see it. So you want to make your So we're going to want to make your stitches nice and neat. And you're going to go up and then down. Nice and neat all the way around. Now if you get to this point and your bottom is a little bigger than your mouth, you could do the same thing again where you cut it down a little bit so it matches. Keep going. You can always flip it over to check the other side and see what it looks like too. And go back and forth if you want to see. And you don't want any of the stuffing to fall out, so you got to make sure the stitches are nice and close. Once we get to the end, we're going to want to make a knot, and I'm going to go to the back of the fish so you don't see it on the top. And this time I'm going to make the loop. Oh, 
Okay. Now, all we have left opened up is the top. So you can kind of feel in there. And if you want to fit any more stuffing, you got to make sure you get a nice little piece. And push it in there. And fill them up as full as you want. Then, we got to do one more stitch. Again, I'm going to go through one side first. So the knot is on the inside. And then again, we're going to go back and forth. Nice and neat and even. Because this is the part we're going to see. And again, if you get to a point where they don't match, you just have to take your scissors and cut the side that's a little bigger. So you'll just have to cut it down to the smaller side. And go all the way around the edges. And once you made it to the end, remember we gotta make our little knot. fish are looking pretty good. Our last thing we've got to do is take some glue and find those little foam eyes and you're gonna put a little dot of glue in the middle and attach one and another little dot over here and attach the other. Now, if you can't find glue and it's easier, you are welcome to just put one little knot in your thread and sew it in there, but you're gonna have to do it before you close the mouth. And also at this point, if you didn't sew your white part of the eyes on, this is where you would have glued your white part and then glued the black dot. Now that you've got your Dr. Seuss fish done, you can take a picture of how they turned out and send it to us via our Ella Johnson Library Facebook page. And I would love to see how they turned out. All right, thank you so much.